All right, welcome back. Uh, another podcast. I apologize. Can we, we've got a little bit of a delay on since our last one that went. Um, it's actually the last one that we recorded was probably was, two, week, two weeks ago, a yeah, week and a half. A Bella update. We did a Bella update, I think, on our last one, and uh, that was prior to us going to ATA, mm-hmm. which um, we, we did a trade show a uh, week ago. It would have been well, almost two weeks now. Um, so it's been a little while, and when I go to ATA, I always get sick, and lo- it happened again. So of course I was I was sick, and Ben, when we got back, wanted to do a podcast last week, and I literally was struggling to even talk. Um, you can still probably tell a little bit in my voice. I'm not 100 percent by any means, but <clears throat> we did decide we wanted to get get back into the rhythm here with our podcast. So I apologize for the delay on it. Um, we we're gonna this one what i'm gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about some stuff that's happened recently um i do think you know some of these podcasts get listened to i know i realize they get listened to a lot later than when we actually record them so it's not like it's a timely thing that's necessary to be always fresh and and uh up to up to pace as far as calendar goes but with it being spring coming um i I say that in maybe in optimism um, we're in the middle of a three-day snow here, and it's cold, and it's it's just late January now, so we've got a long ways to go till spring. But <clears throat> I actually got a little bit ahead of myself this year. Um, one of the things, what the subject that we're going to really focus on here um, is going to be our workshops. And so um, workshops are something that we do in the spring. Uh, we do handle we call them handlers workshops because that's what they are. They're not about training dogs; they're about training people. And so we do these handlers workshops. Um, We typically do three each spring. We're going to do the same thing this year. Um, Dates on them, we've got one. It's called the Next Steps Workshop. That's in in April. That's the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Um, And then we also do a foundation workshop. And the foundation workshop is we've got two dates on it this year. Um, It's going to be in May 8th, 9th, and 10th. And then we've got June 5th, 6th, and 7th. So they're, they're weekends. They're Friday, Saturday, Sundays. Um, we get people, um, from all over the country to come to them. Um, it's part of the, part of the thing that I really enjoy about it is we get to meet, um, people from a lot of different places, lots of different types of dogs. It's not something that is breed specific by any means. I actually have a family, I think that sounds like they're going to be coming and they're from Wisconsin. They messaged me about it and they said, we don't hunt the dog. We're, this is not, this is not a hunting dog. Is this still make sense for us? And the foundation workshop, 100%, I think makes sense for them. Um, we've had a lot of people come in the past that aren't necessarily going to hunt their dogs, but they're looking to build a good foundation, which from that you can you can do just about anything with the dog. So um, those are coming up. We've got one in May. We've got one in June. Now, the Next Steps Workshop, this is um, something that we started a couple years ago, and I call it the Next Steps Workshop intentionally. Uh, it is focused a little bit more on shed hunting. Um, we actually do shed, we, we go shed hunting during it. We, we hold it, um, at the farm that we lease over in Buffalo County on our friend's farm. We actually shed hunt the farm. Um, we spend about half the time of the, it's, it's a half day Friday. So it's Friday starts around noon and then it goes till five o'clock, usually five ish on Friday night. Saturday is a all day thing. And then Sunday we, we get done around noon because a lot, most people have to travel home. So, um, over the course of those three days, we spend about half the time actually shed hunting on the next steps workshop. It's a ton of fun. Um, it's also something that I really like because I, I should probably break the two apart. So the foundation workshop is just that. It's building a foundation. And we focus a ton on um, very simple things, but but primarily it's it's philosophy. It's, it's the idea of how we're going to approach our training. It's the idea of how we're going to put together a training plan. Um, every person there has a different dog of different ages. We've had them as young as... 10 weeks old people have brought little little puppies um, that they just got and then we've had some people bring dogs that are six seven eight years old so it is quite a variety we've had i don't know how many different breeds lots of different breeds um but it's such a variety but it goes back to the idea of it's not we're not there necessarily to train the dogs we're there to train the people and so the the what people get out of it depends on a lot of variables and some of them are what they have for dogs. Some of them are for what they, what their ultimate plans are with their dogs. Um, that's what kind of keeps it 
exciting for us, myself, and our trainers team. Uh, I get a lot of help. I get a lot of assistance on these workshops. Um, developed what I feel is one of the best groups around when it comes to instructional stuff and training. So I've got a group of, of friends that we call our dog bone, dog bone trainers team. They're there with us. Um, it's exciting for us because it keeps us sharp. Um, it allows for us to work with lots of different people in lots of different scenarios and lots of different dogs. And all of that takes adjustment. It takes our willingness and our ability to adjust and fit what is necessary for each person. So um, the scenarios vary. And, and when you've got little young dogs that come, they can't do everything uh, because there's certain things that they won't be able to partake in. Um, they're not big enough. They're not far enough along in training. And that doesn't matter because then we just have you handle one of our dogs. We've got um, multiple dogs. All of our handlers have multiple dogs. So we just give you dogs. It's not a, this isn't a spectator sport. And so I think this is something that people, a lot of people get motivated. I'm in the same boat. I find motivation at times watching YouTube videos and seeing some things that people are doing with dogs. And I, I find it exciting. I find it um, inspiring. But then I realize my dogs that are laying on their beds aren't going to get any better unless I actually take them outside and do this stuff with them. And so for some people, so when I say that, I, I, I say that as a follow-up to this is not a spectator sport. You can't come to a workshop and watch it and get as much out of it. And so if you come with a little dog that's not quite ready to do the stuff that we're doing, you're not going to get the full you're not going to get the full return on the investment if you just stand back and watch because it's one thing to watch me do something. It's one thing to watch somebody else do something. It's a completely different thing to actually have the lead in your hand uh, and actually have to connect the idea of sometimes it's a lot easier for us to watch someone else do it and pick them apart. It's very easy for me on Sunday to watch a football game and shake my head and go, how did he not make that tackle? And then I realize, um, I probably wouldn't have made the tackle either. And so it's easy to stand back and pick apart stuff when you watch it. Put yourself in the f the actual position, and you may have a completely different um, outlook on things. And so I think training, um, working with dogs, is very much a contact sport that you have to be involved in in order to get better at. And so you actually have to do it. And it's that law of like 10,000 hours to master something. There's a book um, There's a book that I read. It was, uh, what's that book that I read? Malcolm Gladwell wrote it. Uh, it's a book, uh, Outliers, it's called. And so it talks about taking ten, making, it takes 10,000 hours to master something. Well, I think that is true. Uh, and so if you're going to be a good dog trainer, you got to put your time in, you got to actually feel it, you got to make the mistakes, you got to understand the timing issues. Um, and then make adjustments. And I do, but I do think there's value in standing back and watching other people do it too. So that's the beauty of these workshops is they're just super intimate. Um, they're very small groups. They're 15 people or less, uh, 15 dogs or less. Um, so that is a foundation. And we talk about literally the foundation. He'll sit, stay, come when I call you. Um, doesn't sound very overwhelming when I say it that way. Uh, but then when you start breaking each one of those parts down, deeply and we break them down really deeply um it gets to be a lot so when people come to these workshops we put a lot on them and the time needs to be um maintained i have to i have to usually hire someone to watch the clock for me because i get long-winded and i'll go over and i'll end up not covering all the stuff we need to cover in the three days so we get through a ton of stuff and i think it can be overwhelming and i've gotten some messages from some people that um, are looking to sign up uh, again, they've signed up in the past. They want to sign up again. Multiple people have sent me this message and said, here's my struggle. I want to go to the Next Steps workshop, but I'm afraid we're not quite there. I'm afraid I haven't done much since we left the last workshop. I'm afraid I would hold the group up. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of they're hesitant to sign up for Next Steps workshop. And I th keep telling them Next Steps means Next Steps. It doesn't mean advanced. So is it going to be advanced for some people? Yeah, probably more advanced than they were a year ago. But that's for those who have put some work in. Now, I don't care if you haven't put much work in. I, If this is enough to inspire and motivate you to continue to put work in, well, then it win. Then, then that's a win. So for me personally, I can be the first person to tell you that workshops are inspiring to me personally. Um, 
And it's for multiple reasons. I love seeing other people find success. I love seeing other people's dogs um, make progress. I love seeing the energy that it gives to the individuals that are holding on to the end of the lead. But I also look at it and go, I need to get out and work with my dogs because I need to make sure that I'm able to do this, this, and this with my dogs as examples, as demonstration. And if I don't put a lot of time into my dogs, my dogs become rusty. Um, they have become rusty. We're, we're doing a, a shoot this weekend. Um, myself, Todd, who is one of the guys that helps us with the workshop, uh, Chris Smith, another guy that helps me with the workshops, uh, the three of us, and then another buddy of mine who has helped me with the workshops in the past, the four of us are taking our dogs and we're going to go pick up for uh, a tower shoot um, this weekend. They're going to shoot pheasants and we're going to pick up for them with our dogs. And so well, I'm very excited about it. Um, I am a little bit reluctant not not to do it, but I'm going, man, I haven't done much in the last eight weeks with my dogs. And so um, we've hunted a lot. And so outside of hunting, we haven't worked on much. Now, this is going to be a little bit like hunting, but it's not, not hunting. It's 100 pheasants have come out of a tower and 20, 10 people shoot at them or whatever it is. It's a lot of gunfire. It's a lot of action. It's a lot of birds. Um, it's, it's just a very different scenario than what we're used to when we go hunting. So have we hunted this fall? Yes. Have we worked on stuff to get sharp and, and dialed in? Absolutely not. So do I expect them to be a bit rusty? Yes. Is that why I want to go and do it? Yes. Uh, has it made me go out and work with my dogs in the last four or five days since I realized I was going to do this? Yeah, it has. So the motivation and the understanding of I've got this thing coming up, I need to get ready for it. That's an, that's, there's value in the, the tower shoot because of that. So I look at these workshops and I realize, man, they're, they're a couple months out, but I'm going to start work. I'm going to, because I have this on my calendar right now, I'm going to start working with my dog on certain things in preparation for it. So I think um, for a lot of people, they, they, they are valuable for lots of different reasons. Uh, some of these folks that have been to the other workshops, so that here's the getting back to the foundation workshop. There's just so much information that we go through and we go through it quickly and it's impossible for you to get it all. Um, it's certainly impossible for you to apply it all. Um, I always tell people, pick out a few things, bring it home, work on it, and then build from there. Um, the idea with take, I have several people that are going to take the work, the foundation workshop a second time. And this is a scenario that, that I, I highly recommend actually. I, we've had a lot of people do it in the past. I think you get more out of going to a workshop a second time than the first. The reason I think you do is because you know what to expect. If you've never come to one of these before, and I know it because I've gone to workshops before. I'm try I want to go to a workshop this uh, spring. There's one down at a buddy of ours place down in Missouri. Brookstone Kennels is having a handler's workshop. I would really like to go to it. Um, I've got some buddies that are going to it. I would like to go to it. I can't because I have a commitment that weekend. I won't be able to make it. But I think that when you go to these things and you've never been to them before, you're human and there's a bit of reluctancy, hesitancy. There's things that we look at and go, I just don't know what to expect, so I'm a little bit uncomfortable. And so it takes a while to settle in. So that alone, I've been to workshops before where I was like that, and all I wanted to do is not make a fool of myself. So just being able to relax enough and settle in is important before you can really start absorbing stuff. So if it takes you a day to do that, which doesn't, it wouldn't be surprising to me. It's a bunch of strangers, a bunch of new people, you're self-conscious about your dog, um, you know, all these different things. If it takes a day to settle in, well, that's a day's worth of stuff that you probably weren't focused on and it's impossible to be able to absorb it. The other thing is, is I put so much into those three days, I just don't think it's physically possible for someone to absorb it all. So the second time when someone comes back, they already have an understanding of the big major key points. They have an understanding of the major philosophy ideas. They have a major understanding of the general direction that this thing is going to go. And now what they can do is plug themselves in and become much more productive in the moment because and I think that's where they're going to start to get this idea of you get more touches, you get more physical, you know, mechanical things going. And that's where it goes back to the idea of it's not a spectator sport. It's a jump in with both feet. And actually that's where you're going to get your benefits. So the people that come to it the second time, I think really 
really get a lot out of it that way. So I do have a couple people that I said, you know what, I think I'm going to do the the next steps workshop because I'm going to come and I'm going to, and I had to reassure him, we're not going to be advanced. We're going to be wherever you are. The next steps to where you are. Some will be further ahead. The beauty of the next steps workshop that I love people to have a chance to see is when they come to a foundation workshop, it's so intense and high pay. It's just fast because I have to get through a lot of stuff. It's not realistic to how I actually train. And if you watch uh, any of our series, Cody Go Back, Live with Spry, Bella Be Good, those are three that we've documented some dog training specifically, consistently. You're going to see that my pace is much, much slower, and it's nothing like the foundation workshop. The foundation workshop is cram a bunch of stuff into a short period of time. Not the ideal way to raise a dog. Instead, we like to slow down. I stressed the idea in the last year, and I got this from David Latham, actually, a guy that I look up to greatly when it comes to training. And he said to me, one of the reasons you're enjoying this little pup, Bella, which is a dog that came from one of his sires, he said, one of the reasons you're really enjoying her, and I can tell, is because you're, the reason you're having success is because you're enjoying it. He said, you're really having a lot of fun with that dog. I said, yeah, I am. She's, she's, it's just so much fun to work with her. And he said, that's why you're having success, because it's fun. You're, you're enjoying it. And so I didn't realize necessarily the value in, in the importance of enjoying what you're doing with the dog. You know how many people I talk with that when I hear them talk about their dog, it's almost like it's a chore to them. And when I say a chore, I mean it's comparable to what's a ch- pulling weeds in the garden. Like it, nobody enjoys it. It's something that has to get done, and you do it because you have to do it. I don't think you should be raising your dogs and working with dogs because you have to do it. I think it should be because you want to do it. And then when you want to do it, it should be fun and enjoyable. And whenever something is fun and enjoyable, I want to do it more. And when you want to do it more, you will. And when you do it more, you'll get better. And so all of a sudden you, you see this snowball and you see this momentum that gets going and it's all positive and it continues to go in a positive direction. Well, foundation, next steps workshop, I stress the idea of let's have a little bit of fun. I think we, we kick back a little bit. We slow down. Um, we really take it at a different pace. There may be some cocktails midday at the foundation workshop or at the next steps workshop. We don't have time for that with foundation. We do cocktails in the evening, but we don't, we don't have time midday, but during the shed one, the next steps one. Yeah, man, we might kick back. Some people might kick back on the hill with a cooler and watch a few people work their dog. And then we might switch and I'll kick back with a cooler and I'll watch you work your dog. And it's just, it's a very, very different pace. It's a totally different mindset. And that is more realistic to the way I think you should approach your everyday training. So I do think there's value in that alone. I think some people are going to get value by bringing their dog there and having them be around some really well-behaved dogs. Because in this workshop, the dogs are just with us and they're just with us because that's part of like everyday life. So uh, it, for that reason, I think it's, an, it's a different style of workshop um, that is very valuable. You cannot come to it if you didn't go to the foundation. And that's not to be like snobby. It's not to be like uh, the good old boys club. It's nothing like that. It's because if you don't understand the core foundations of what we build the training on, you won't be able to mix in to the next steps workshop. You'll be confused and you'll be wondering and you'll be... It will not allow us to do what we want to do from a next steps training standpoint. It, you have to have that base understanding, and then you can move into the next steps. So that's why we do it that way. Um, but I think there's going to be a few people that actually take the next steps workshop because they already took the foundation workshop last year or the year before, and then they're going to come and do a foundation workshop after. Um, it, we, it, the dates don't make sense. You know, we do the next steps workshop first. And the reasoning is, is because of the time of the year. April 17th, 18th, and 19th, we're going to be able to shed hunt. Um, hell, we've had 30 inches of snow that weekend. 
uh, two years ago for the Next Steps workshop. Last year, I think there was a little bit of snow. A little bit, but it was but pretty good last Not year. bad. Weather was pretty good. Um, but there was still some snow on the ground on the north sides of the hills. There was still some snow on the ground. But it was actually shed hunting. I mean, it was a good good actual time to shed hunt. So you can't, we can't do Next Steps workshop in May and June because everything's greened up. It's too warm. Ticks are out. We're not going to go shed hunting during that time of the year. So... I, we do the, the next steps is always first. It's always our first workshop. Um, and so that's the reasoning behind it. Um, we wanted to do this podcast to kind of touch on that because it is fresh. Um, I, spots are filling up. Um, I've got June actually is the, our latest one is the one that's filling up the quickest right now. Um, but we do have, we have room. We limit it to 15 people per, per session. Um, it allows for us to break down into groups of three or four per person, uh, per, per group. So it's like a real good ratio to handlers. Um, but if you are interested, don't hesitate. I wouldn't wait. Um, this is the earliest I've ever announced them. So they're, they're going to fill up probably a little bit sooner. But um, we have. you can email me. It's Jeremy. J-E-R-E-M-Y at dogbonehunter.com. Just send me an email or go to our Facebook or go to our Instagram. Um, there's some posters that we've put together that have it. and It's got the information. It's just going to tell you to email me. Um, gives you a little bit more information on the workshops. Um, like I said, people are going to come. I encourage families to come. I encourage couples to come. Um, we have it set up. It's $395 for a dog and handler. If you're a couple, if you got a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, that happens a lot. 35 bucks for the second person. I think the reason I say that is because we we need consistency, not just consistency in training with the dog. We need consistency across the board within your house. Kids are free. I've had families bring three, four kids with them. Um, and I get it. They're not going to be able to focus through the entire time. We've got stuff that they can do. We've got, I've got 10 acres or 20 acres they can raise hell on. Um, we've had young boys playing in ponds and I've it just, we've got kids too. So we get it. Um, but it's, I encourage families to come together because to me, that's where the consistency needs to come is across the board within the family with every person that's going to interact with the dog. It's only fair to the dog to have one set of rules. And I'm big on the idea of making it fair. Don't ask these dogs to to do things that's not fair and then ex- have expectations that they're going to do certain things. You have to you have to set them up properly. So, I encourage the idea of of bringing families. Um we've got some that are coming from I think one's coming from like Washington, driving from Washington, which I think is like not DC, like West Coast Washington. Um, we have some people that fly in. If you're flying in, you can fly into Green Bay, or you can fly into the cities, or you can fly into Chicago and rent a car and come up. We're a couple hours from Chicago or a couple hours from the cities. But every, uh, if you want more information, just email me on it. Um, but I thought we'd do a podcast quickly on these workshops as they come up because we've, it's been a little bit of a topic and you're also going to see some things. Um, it's a project that we're working on right now and it's maybe a little early to let the cat out of the bag, but, um, over the last several years, we've filmed the workshops, um, and we filmed the workshops to be used in our DVDs. And one of the things that we did was we, we have literally hours and hours and hours of of footage from workshops that I think is real. I think they're really good. And I think they're very valuable. Um, and so we've, we've talked about it. I've kicked around the idea for a long time of how do we utilize that stuff the best. Um, and so we were talking about doing like a whole video that is basically a look inside of the workshop. It's, it's you, you, getting all the workshop information without being there. Now, it's not as good as actually being there, I don't think, but it's pretty good. Um, you're going to get a lot of lot out of it. So we were talking about, you know, do we make a DVD series out of it? Do we make some type of series and sell that as a supplementary training tool? I think the value in that is, at times, it's maybe even greater than the DVDs. I think the DVDs, the value in those are, they're sequenced, they're, they've been produced, um, so they're, they're very, very much polished and trimmed and edited and they ha- they make sense from start to finish. That's our, that was our goal anyway, to make those DVDs make sense, um, give you a good overview and, in, in, in a, a good look at your objectives when it comes to putting together a plan when, when raising a dog. And I mean, some of the puppy DVDs, 
three hours or something. They're all like three and a half hours. I mean, they're super long, but they've been edited and trimmed. So we have all this other footage, and we did incorporate some of the workshop footage into those um, where it applied specifically to chapters. But then we had all this other stuff from workshops that just, it was just stuff that has come up with people and individuals and dogs, and they're all unique to the different people and the different dogs. And so what we've, we were going to do is we were going to create this this series or vol- these volumes of workshop videos and sell them as a separate DVD. Well, there's a lot of expense that goes into it, and that's why we were talking about, well, how do we do this? What do we do? We've decided we're going to do it. Um, but instead of selling it, we're going to do it for, we're going to give it to you guys for free. Um, we're going to actually build a YouTube series and it's going to be basically a playlist of inside these workshops. And Ben has been working on them, um, chopping them up to these blocks of, it's not going to be as polished as a DVD. Um, it's, but it's going to be blocks of information. It is going to be sequenced because it's going to start on day one. It's going to work its way through day three. And we're just going to create playlists and we're going to create playlists, um, that are going to be workshops. And then under the workshops within that one playlist, we're going to have multiple workshops. I mean, we've got three or four years of them filmed, three years of them filmed in multiple multiple workshops in certain years. So, and then this year, we're going to be filming this year. So we're going to continue to use these. And I, I just look at them and I go, there's just so much. I think, I think there's a ton of value in them. And so if we can use them to go beyond the workshop, go beyond the, the 15 people that are here with their dogs and give that to, we don't have a huge following by any means, but the people that we do are super committed. And so if you're not following us on YouTube, I would recommend it. Um, you can subscribe to it. You can turn your notifications on. You can get all these notifications on when we put new videos on with Bella and all that stuff. But this alone is probably worth the, the subscription to the YouTube channel. I know you won't overpay for it anyway. But so it's, I mean, it's the best deal around. It's free. But we're going to put that out and, and that's in the works right now. So... Uh, maybe it was a little early. Maybe I did it intentionally because Ben's sitting right next to me and maybe I'm just turning the heat up on him a little bit to push through them. But no, he's got a nice start on them already. Um, we're going to get a little deeper into it before we start posting them. But that's the first you're going to have heard about it. It won't be the last you've heard about it. We'll talk a little bit more on it um, as we get closer to releasing some of them. Um, what do we call it? Inside the workshop? Inside the dog, Inside the dog bone workshop is what the playlist is going to be. So we'll be talking about it more. Um that's a that's a that's a probably a pretty good overview of some of the stuff. If you've got questions on upcoming workshops, Jeremy at dogbonehunter.com, shoot me an email. You can message us on Facebook or Instagram with questions. Um, either way, we'll get it. We'll get you some answers on it. But um, I'm looking forward to it, and, and I'm looking forward to it because um, there's a few other things that we've got going right now that I am I'm very excited about from a dog standpoint, um, and and it's just this is just a another layer of it for me it's it's a it's you know the bella be good series is inspiring for me to continue to share with you guys because the feedback from it is fantastic um the value i think people are getting out of it is real high and that's that's important to me we're also getting some real ding dongs that are making some comments like i love that too youtube is where we're getting that i've got some guys that make comments now i don't even know if they're real people to be honest with you i mean they've got no they've got a page but they don't have any followers and they don't have any videos posted and i don't know what i don't so i don't know if they're real people or not but they'll make comments and they'll make really idiotic ones um and ben will ask me you want me to just delete this because ben will ben kind of keeps polices that for me um and and so he says here's you know can you let's let's reply to some of these questions and some of them are great but some of them are real idiots and uh, the, some of them i you know whatever i ben would ask me a couple times said you want me to delete these people and just block them i said hell no i love it I love it when these morons make make comments like this because I I I don't want to hide from it. I don't want to duck from it. I mean, some of these people are you know your your ways are so you're too abusive on dogs and all this stuff. And I go, man, I don't mind. I don't mind commenting back to that person and letting them know that 
I, I think that they should stick with however works for them. You know, I, I'm not I'm not going to argue with them. I have no reason to argue with them. I think it's interesting that they follow our page and watch the video. I mean, if you despise what I'm doing, I would I got better things to do. I'd go train my dog if I were you know if I'm that person. But whatever the case may be, I find a little humor in it anyway. Um, but those are those are those YouTube platforms for us to me are just real nice because they're a little more meat on the bone for you. Um, I think they're just a little bit more stuff. And, and for those people that are, are interested in it and want it, um, that's a great place for us to give it to you. So uh, please keep, keep supporting that stuff. Keep following and keep listening to these things. Um, we got a couple more we're going to actually record. I've got a couple, couple podcasts that um, other people's podcasts that uh, we got Sporting Dog Talk. That's uh, Tony Peterson, our buddy from Tony, our buddy Tony reached out to me yesterday. Um, we're going to get with him in the next, within the next week. We're going to be um, knocking out a podcast with him again. He's got a couple things that he'd like to cover. Um, our friends, the Bomars down in Iowa with Arrow. Um, they have some questions. They've got a podcast that they'd like to uh, go through a bunch of shed specific training questions. Uh, so we're gonna, be, we're gonna be knocking it out with them. I've put everybody on hold because the old voice hasn't been there for me, and I I got a weird enough voice when I'm not sick. Uh, when I am sick, it's nearly intolerable. So um, we'll be knocking out some of that, and and as we get that, we'll bring it to you as well. So thank you guys for the support. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you would do us the favor, be sure to subscribe, leave us a review. All that stuff helps us out. Uh, greatly when it comes to us trying to grow and, and um, spread kind of the following of what we're doing. So, and if you got someone that you think might be interested uh, that this could bring some value to, please don't hesitate to share it with them. So thank you. And we'll, be con- we'll continue to do these as we, as we move along here. <music>